daripada Forest Rangers sekarang saya berada dekat kawasan uh, perumah, uh, office Datuk uh, Willy Mojin uh, sekarang ini saya berada dekat sana uh, Datuk Datuk punya kereta pun ada dekat sana nak datang ni mungkin saya nak jumpa dia sekejap lah ok guys saya jumpa nanti dengan Datuk Willy Mojin ya ini dia barang-barang yang datuk display dekat dalam DM Dewan dia gambar dia oh ini dia masa dia kena anugerah tu datuk di istana negara tu dia IB Datuk Willy Moj nak Mojin ok I'm here <laughs> ok good evening uh, I'm I'm now with uh, Datuk uh, Willy Mojin's uh, office consider office lah ha huh? alright so now I'm with uh, beside him I also have Mr. Buckland Rimba so today uh, I'm met Datuk we want to talk about Social economic. economic, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so, I think I leave the the question and answers to Mr. Buckland and Dato itself, lah. Thank you, okay. thank you, thank you. So, put it. So, Dato, my question is, okay, as we know that they are also infighting now, who is going to be the challenge for mm. MP? But that's not why. We came here to drop by to see you. Hmm. We came here because we want to know also what what is your game plan hmm. when you are going to be re-elected as MP of Puncak Borneo. Because obviously you have you have everything in your hand now, being a minister. Hmm. You know everything is in your hand now, and the people have given you a majority vote during the previous PRU 14. So now you are considered the incumbent because you have such a huge majority. So the issue that we want to ask and we want to know now, which we are very curious also, is about how are you going to develop the social economy of the whole of Puncak Borneo from Serembu, Mambong to Tarat. Okay. Now, what are your game plan for the future because obviously you you have the majority vote so how people vote during PRU 15 is going to be another ball game but I'm sure that you still have retained a lot of the support so we just want to know you know yeah. so yeah okay, really leave it to you. all right uh, thank you uh, to Mr. Uh, Buck and also to Mr. Bernard uh, Iro uh, for dropping by uh, to see me and I really appreciate your presence today uh, to you both of you uh, Basically, um, I want to uh, go back to the uh, chronology of the whole uh, things in our uh, parliament and our constituency You see, uh, in 2018, uh, basically I, I was uh, elected uh, and uh, uh, today, I'm still the MP of Puchak Borneo, and of course, when I been elected in 2018 uh, till today, it's very unfortunate for me. We uh, just about uh, after 22 months, we have uh, a government change, and after that, we have the uh, pandemic uh, COVID-19, and uh, throughout this uh, pandemic, uh, approximately about two years, uh, there's a lot of activities uh, being halted. So uh, um, that not much uh, we can do, neither from the uh, activities and so on. And uh, this is something that is uh, very unfortunate for us. But despite that, uh, even though uh, during the very short tenure, um, there's a lot of uh, 
uh, development and uh, I'm actually focused on uh, uh, this uh, uh, charitable kebajikan and also the uh, social development and also basic infrastructure because I believe um, we basically have to empower our human capital so therefore I'm basically uh, put effort uh, a lot of effort to give incentive to students uh, because I believe that uh, only uh, by giving them education and support them that's why I came up with the incentive to give incentive to the UPSR uh, student that achieve a good result and also I gave the incentive to the student that can enter universities where um, for the diploma we gave them uh, 300 ringgit as an incentive and for degree we give them uh, 500 ringgit so with this small token we'll give them a uh, a moral, uh, uh, what they call that, motivation for them to to study hard and to strive in their study and to be someone one day. Because um, why we need to empower and also to to enhance and to strengthen our our human capital in Puchak Borneo, simply because when we have a lot of uh, educated community, um, they will be basically have the opportunity to serve and. Uh, they can become uh, a good uh, employees. They can work with any big uh, uh, employers, not only locally, but they also can go all over the world. And number two, when we have a lot of uh, a student that uh, strive uh, up to university, and we have a lot of graduate, we have a lot of educated people. And even though uh, we don't have uh, educated people, but we also empower the uh, unfortunate group where those that is uh, uh, cannot pass their exam or the drop up student we also gave them a second opportunity that's why i i look into uh, opportunity to give a second chance the program called second chance where we uh, basically gave them an opportunity to uh, study more tivet skill like uh, pembuatan chocolate uh, buatan tangan and then we sponsored them uh, Recently, I sponsored about uh, 58 uh, drop-up student uh, or uh, drop-up youth that uh, don't have the opportunity to further their study to learn uh, driving uh, E-class. Can you imagine if these 58 people, they can actually get the lorry license, they basically can work as a, a transporter, uh, they can uh, drive uh, tippers, trucks, haulage and so on. I think. Basically, on average, they can earn about uh, three to four thousand, and this will uplift and uh, we give the opportunity for them to earn a little bit better income. And if we look at the uh, the graduate uh, segment, if we can uh, produce more graduate, these people will be ready later on when we bring economics development like uh, factories, like uh, uh, big agriculture, and so on. Because to me. I believe, even though, if let's say we bring the a lot of economics development, uh, a lot of factories, a lot of investors coming to Puchak Borneo to invest, to build factories, to build uh, what they call that uh, uh, big uh, companies and so on. But if our local are not ready to work with them, there will be no point because there will be a flux of uh, uh, other people from outside to come to to serve here. I give a very good example. Those days, we think that uh, um, economics development and investment like uh, Trinikan, like uh, CMS Klinker, like uh, uh, other factories that coming over to Puchak Borneo, we think that it will benefit the local. But end up, uh, the people are from outside that actually fill this vacancy. So why is that so? Is because one of the reason that I probably foresee is because of we don't have our human capital to serve them. Maybe uh, they do not have uh, qualification, or even if they have a qualification, but they would prefer to do uh, other other types of industry. For example, if someone is graduated with uh, uh, what they call that chemical engineering, they might want to work in a big conglomerate and so on. So that's why we must find a balance. Uh, first, we have to strengthen our human resource we have to basically have more uh, people from Puchak Borneo that is academically educated and also exposed. And for those people that do not have the academics achievement, we actually can give them more Tibet courses and so on, so that they are ready when, when the times come, when the infrastructure is ready in our constituency, 
in our Puncak Bono constituency, then uh, a lot of investors coming, then they are ready to serve. So uh, that is what we want to see. So that is a, a, a game plan that we want to do. We basically want to make sure that our human capital is ready. Then we can bring in uh, investors to come in. And secondly, we also would like them to basically look into uh, the opportunity that is available because government provide a lot of opportunity for those uh, young agropreneurs. And uh, you know, uh, we, uh, the Dayak area, especially in Puchak Bonyo, we are encompassing of 70% uh, of the uh, uh, voters here are all Bidayu. And uh, being a Bidayu, uh, we have uh, a lot of land that we actually can develop, uh, not in terms of uh, big scale, but we also can start small first. Um, there's a lot of idle land that we can, uh, can develop and uh, people mindset also have to change because no matter what we do, if let's say the people mindset doesn't change, we cannot change a lot of things. Uh, because now, like uh, from my ministry alone, we also have the opportunity to have the uh, um, new uh, uh, palm oil plantation and then the scheme for the smallholders and all this. And uh, the government also provide a loan, which is very minimal, whereby they can plan and they can apply and plant the uh, palm oil. And then later on, after five years, when the, uh, the crop start to uh, uh, produce the production, after five years, then they can actually pay their loan. So it's not necessary to be immediately they can pay. So they have a buffer of five years to service the loan, which is quite uh, reasonable. And uh, the interest is very low. And if we look at the agri-commodity sector, we have uh, also in pepper industry. Now the price of pepper is already about 60 ringgit per kilo for black pepper. And uh, I, I've seen uh, quite a lot of a successful, um, what they call that, uh, smallholders that basically planting this agri-commodity, they can uh, have a good income. Can you imagine if let's say they can produce uh, uh, 1,000 uh, ton, I mean 1,000 kilo, one ton, they can already have about 16,000. So uh, from our ministry, we also provide the opportunity to have a scheme for new planting for the uh, pepper and also for the matured pepper uh, program uh, uh, subsidy, Lada Matang. So uh, if they have approximately about uh, 200 vine, they also basically can give this, uh, get this benefit from the government to get the subsidy and so on, and the uh, fertilizer and agriculture input assistance. And um, in terms of cocoa industry, we also giving them a new uh, a scheme and program where they can actually plan a new uh, area that government will assist them. And uh, one of the things that we also encourage uh, people to plan uh, uh, forest uh, plantation, uh, community forest plantation, where uh, all our idle land, we can actually uh, plant this kind of uh, uh, forestry uh, species like bamboo, polonia, abasia, eucalyptus, and so on. And uh, after uh, four or five years, these people can harvest and basically sell it to the sawmill and, and basically can get uh, income. In uh, the model in Indonesia, uh, basically they, they do the forest, uh, community forest plantation. They basically can plant it like vegetables where they plant everywhere in the idle land and so on. They also plant it at the backyard. And uh, from here, when they, they harvest it, they can just sell. So this will also bring uh, more income to the community. And of course, um, I want to see that we become the agriculture hub and also ecotourism hub. Uh, in Puchak Bonio, uh, we also uh, see there's a lot of uh, ecotourism uh, potential, uh, a lot of nice place that we can develop as uh, ecotourism. And uh, this will basically, if we do it well, we do it right, we can basically generate uh, income for the villagers. And uh, uh, not only villagers, but those people that involve in the tourism industry, like tour guides and all that. The spillover effect is enormous, but we just have to do it right. And we have to work together to ensure that this uh, uh, tourism product can be polished because Puncak Bonio is one of the tourism belt in our country. So we should harness this opportunity to, to bring more of this uh, ec social economic development. On top of that, um, as you can see for the last uh, 
uh, three and a half years, I served as an MP. We basically grip, uh, bring more infrastructure, telecommunication infrastructure. Uh, we built more towers. And of course, I know that uh, it's still not enough. But uh, thus far, we have, uh, uh, what they call that, have done uh, 20 towers. And under the Jandela project, we also have about 47 uh, Jandela project that is coming soon. And now you can see all over the place, uh, there is already a fiber optic line already being laid uh, all the way from Bau, uh, from BRS, uh, Nara East. And even my, my office here, we already have the fiber optic line all the way from 10 mile to Nara East. And uh, we actually branch it out to, to uh, Mambong uh, Sari uh, uh, Road. And uh, in Siburan area, they already did it in uh, Kapong Doras and so on until uh, the end of Tarat area uh, and all this area our dream is basically we want to wire it up with the fiber optic so that they can actually uh, bring uh, more uh, telecommunication facilities and what does this mean later on when we have the matured uh, uh, mobile infrastructure we have a matured fiber optic infrastructure in our, our area if we open up the opportunity for our youth our citizen our people in Puchak Borneo to involve in the digital marketing or the, in digital commerce where they can sell their product online and, and nowadays we already can start to see that actually can sell their product via WhatsApp, via Facebook and so on and this indirectly can bring an income to them And but uh, we must work together we must have one vision to basically we not just put this burden to our our uh, uh, wakil rakyat because everybody have their role to basically to play to contribute to the community and if we work as a team to bring a lot of development we actually can make sure that this game plan can be executed well and when this being executed well we can bring more success and um, of course uh, if we look at the infrastructure uh, now what we have to do is we have to ensure that the road accessibility is there of course i know that it's not enough uh, but we have to do one step at a time uh, it's, uh, it's better to do something one step at a time rather than it's totally idle and it's too overwhelming uh, so uh, because uh, we also have our own constraint like budget constraint and all that from the government side uh, but despite that we uh, every year we continue to do you can see that uh, for the last few years we have built more uh, what they call that uh, uh, jalan perhubungan desa the electricity roads and so on, so on and uh, also we we basically give opportunity to the the poor group uh, provide them with the pprt rumah perumahan rakyat termiskin and all that and repair their houses and of course the uh, charity and also the kebajikan is the welfare is one of the things that we have to look and we cannot ignore and as you can see that uh, in, even if people uh, uh, sick people have the chronic disease and all that we give them a uh, uh, one exam or assistant and then if people uh, 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 what they call that there is a case of uh, uh, death and so on we also give this uh, token to give uh, help the family and so on but all these things is actually not enough because uh, uh, I understand uh, with the very limited resources that we have uh, the allocation from the government we only can do this much and uh, in our parliament, we basically only have about 2 million uh, outright grants that we can actually share among uh, 218 kampong together with taman-taman, you know. So can you imagine this 2 million divided by 218? It's, it's kind of quite difficult task to do, but despite that, I try my best to, to basically to fulfill uh, based on uh, two criteria, which is importance and urgency of the matter. For example, if let's say they want to build the road and that uh, effect, uh, the impact will be uh, improving the livelihood of 100 families there and that is actually important and urgent. So uh, as an MP, we have to look at the importance and urgency of the matter. Yeah. So of course, there is some other thing that uh, we cannot fulfill every, everything all at one shot. But to me, if we can do one year, we can do this one, we can do a bit next year we can do a bit and so on at least there is a progress because i will be lie to my constituency if let's say i can say everything at one shot together is uh, close to uh, impossible but not not that i'm saying that is uh, impossible but 
uh, we, we have to be realistic because we know our capacity. So when we look at, we, we look at our capacity, uh, this much we can deliver, you know? So uh, that is what I want to do. And uh, on top of that, we also want to bring uh, a lot of welfare assistance to our people. And the reason why I want to, to bring this because I want to basically uplift them from the poverty group to the level that they actually can be independent. So for the first, uh, for the first level, we assist them first, and then at the second level, we must guide them. We must give them motivation. We must teach them how to come up from their uh, poverty box. Uh, so that effort is basically ongoing process now. So it will take a lot of time. And uh, apart from that, we are also looking at uh, those uh, infrastructure, like I said just now. In Puchak Bonyo, we already uh, have a few kampong that do not have roads, which is uh, uh, Biak Jabir, one of it, which we already got the approval from KPLB for 24 million to basically to build the road, which is going to be a uh, tender soon. And other kampong like uh, Kampong uh, Buk Ayun, Kampong Sting, uh, Kampong Nyagol, these are the kampong that actually they move after uh, the construction of the dam and after the uh, dam been uh, being uh, impounded. Uh, so they have to move the higher ground. And uh, these are the kampong that do not have the access road at the moment. And it's not because of the government do not want to build the road, but basically that area have to be gazetted and the perimeter, uh, the perimeter survey of the dam must be, uh, must be surveyed uh, in order for them to uh, alienate the area and then do the infrastructure of road and so on. And um, on top of that, uh, there is some kampong that still do not have electricity, like kampong Sapit, uh, of which recently we already got the approval for them to have the the uh, what they call it, the electricity supply, and um, is going to be implemented somewhere in uh, May or June this year. And uh, other area, I think they're already well connected. So uh, basically, in Puchak Bonyo, we already have the area already well connected. Now we have to look at the uh, circular economy, where we have to ensure that while there's uh, have a development, there must be also a balance. There is where we have to look at the environment because uh, to have a sustainable uh, environment development goal is also important. So therefore, I actually started to build a bin center. Uh, my effort to build the bin center for each kampong to make it proper so that when people enter your kampong, people can see that, oh, your kampong is very clean and then you dispose your garbage and uh, your, uh, your uh, debris uh, nicely and it's all organized. Whereas um, in the past, if we enter the kampong, we can see all the garbage, the debris is everywhere. So these are the effort. I have so far uh, have built quite a number of uh, uh, bin centers to ensure that our, our rivers is clean and our village is clean. People can dispose their, their garbage into the specific area. And the impact of this is, is very, uh, um, you can call it uh, tangible or intangible because the impact is you can have a healthy people because you do not know what kind of virus that may be generated from that debris or that, that uh, uh, garbage, you know. And number two, we also can protect our rivers because if, we, if they don't uh, dispose their, their garbage uh, properly in the kampong, they can actually just throw it all over the place and they can throw it to the river. And then the impact is basically the river become the tea is very, Ice, uh, ice saw kind of uh, uh, environment, and it's also going to in, uh, affect the uh, the the aqua uh, uh, what they call that uh, uh, ecosystem. So that is the thing that we have to look at. So um, that is on the uh, environment side, and uh, we also have to look into the spiritual side. So that is where uh, I'm also supported a lot of churches. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, masjid, surau, and even tokong. So that's why I'm basically in Sinyawan, I basically uh, requesting a special fund from uh, yeah, Prime Minister to basically to give 200,000 for them to build uh, the tokong. And then every tokong in Puchak Bonyo, I gave them 50,000. And all the churches, I also give them uh, fund and so on to basically to ensure that they have the activities for the spiritual activities and so on. And we, I would like to help everybody. And I do not want uh, certain people to be left out because 
I believe this is a shared prosperity. We have to work, but I believe, yes, I know, I acknowledge that maybe it's not enough, but it's a work uh, in process. So therefore, if uh, once I begin uh, be given another mandate, I have to continue to serve to see more, uh, to uh, solicit more project from federal to bring it into our constituency so that our constituency can prosper, so that our state can prosper, and then our country also can prosper together. So that is uh, the bigger game plan. But there's a lot of things that I would like to share, but due to the very limited time, uh, maybe we can share it at a time. But I really hope that uh, we can bring more uh, uh, changes to our community, not only in terms of development, but also in terms of uh, uh, what they call that uh, spiritual and academics and uh, human capital development. Thank you. Thank you, Dato, for giving us a brief of what is your game plan. And also, I believe that it's very holistic in nature because it takes into factor all those spiritual as well as material well into consideration. Yeah. So yeah. I think it will be good for the the whole constituency of Puncha Borneo yeah. that we have this kind of growth mindset, growth uh, potential for everybody, not just a specific person, but the whole group and category of people to be yeah. encompassed into the whole game plan. Yeah. So we would like to ask another just short question, okay? Yeah. Just short question. So how are you going to go in? Let's say this is very, very different. Let's say if GPS would not want you to be the MP and they have their own <laughs> candidate, yeah. as we know that they had three main candidates, which is Councillor Nick, Rangin, and Wijok. Mm. So, and which party are you going to use? Are you going to use the Satu or are you going to go for independent or how? Can you just, 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 um, this is very, very a lot of, uh, technical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that is a very uh, um, uh, tough question to answer. But you see, uh, basically, um, I'm actually being, being part to, uh, to give the supply of uh, confidence to the government. And therefore, I'm basically supporting a Perikatan National last time. And now it's under Perikatan BN kind of uh, coalition. So basically, um, I, I will leave it to the top leadership of uh, GPS, I think, uh, and also uh, uh, hopefully they can uh, give due consideration. And uh, to me, I can, I can serve and work with anybody. Even while I was in opposition, I basically work with everybody for, for the sake of people, uh, development, and also uh, for their well-being. Uh, because we, uh, I believe, uh, it's not that I say that I'm not uh, indispensable. Uh, there's a lot of uh, 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 intelligent and smart people, but uh, being smart uh, is ne not necessary that we can actually uh, serve uh, in, in that particular position. So it, it depends on how we basically uh, do our PR with the federal ministers, our connection and our experience and so on that we contribute to how we how effective we can serve our constituency and basically we also have to be um, uh, what they call that uh, accepted by the uh, uh, what they call that, the voters in our constituency because at the end of the day uh, the voters will decide uh, so therefore I I would uh, really hope uh, that they they can consider uh, to basically give me a chance to serve and I make sure that uh, if that chance be given, I will definitely double my effort. Although now I, I work very hard, but I still have to work extra hard to make sure that uh, our people are not left out. And uh, I do not know. I mean, um, if people, I leave, uh, I leave it to the people to be my judge. I mean, I do not want to, to say bad things about anybody. I think, uh, this uh, inspiring uh, candidate, uh, they have their, their own very rights because it's a democratic country. Everybody have a fair chance to basically to showcase and also to uh, basically to offer to their voters. So, uh, so as an incumbent, I'm also not left uh, behind. Uh, I also want to tell people to look into what I have done and how I have uh, served my uh, kawasan so far. 
and uh, hopefully uh, they will see uh, things that I have done. So uh, I know that uh, we cannot do a lot of things uh, within this uh, uh, three and a half years. Uh, there will be still another another term which is aspiring next year in some way in uh, in May, but I do not know whether the election will be called earlier. But um, I would say that I, I have not rest uh, uh, and uh, shake my leg, you know, I have uh, done my very best. But if the people think that my very best is not enough, they are free to, to make a choice. And uh, as an incumbent, uh, I also have to uh, defend my seat. But like what I said, uh, I'm ready to work with uh, GPS if they're given the chance. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you for that that answer to the question which I think a lot of viewers will want to know how you're going to look, how are you going to look at it so any word of uh, encouragement or positive motivational words for the voters yeah. I mean, I'm sure they want to yeah I I would like to urge to the voters uh, to give me the opportunity to serve and you have done uh, how I have worked for the last uh, three, four years, and uh, I really want to strive further to bring our uh, constituent, uh, constituency to the next level, and uh, I want to deliver more. And uh, of course, we have to work together to ensure this uh, become a reality. I mean, uh, we cannot build our kawasan in one day, but uh, if given a chance uh, to uh, serve uh, another terms uh, that will be a lot of things that we can bring to our people and I hope that uh, all the effort that I have done uh, is up to you all to make a decision but I just appeal that you will give the support to me when I become the candidate in PRU 15 later on. Thank you very much and may God bless all of you. Thank you Dato for Thank answering you. all the three questions. Basically, first is your game plan for the socio-economy of yeah. Chak Bonio. Second is with regards to your position within the GPS and within the government. How is the stand going to be? And then third is your appeal to the voters to you know, consider you as a candidate for this coming Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank 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 you. Uh, plantation and commodities. So plantation and commodities. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we give thumb up to Dato. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. To support Dato during this coming, uh, I mean, uh, the next parliamentary G15. So uh, do give Dato a full support because he's a very nice uh, our YP for Pucat Borneo. Thank you very much, Dato. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for the Strangers Kitchen. Thank you very much, Dato. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.